for Breath, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, whatever it's called, that Zelda game. One day you'll learn what the name is. Game I don't called. think I ever will. I think the only way I ever will is if I love it even more than Breath of the Wild and it becomes my new, like, second or first favorite game of all time. And then I'll remember its name. It'd be funny if you liked it more and still couldn't get the name right, though. <laughs> That's 100% going to happen. I'm just screwed either way. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the HGO podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Ethan, and joining me as always are my good friends, Kyle. Hello. And Hunter, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just as well. Dude. I am like so exhausted this week. Like I am genuinely <laughs> so exhausted because not only did I see Paramore this past week, what well, well, right that was, dude. I'm wearing my hoodie, this expensive merch that costs like way too much money. Won't talk about that. Then it is I had the like a busy concert buying way. <laughs> it is the concert buying way. My favorite part was so I saw them in Birmingham. It was a great time, by the way. Very good. They played 26 for the first time in five years, only at my show, because I'm just the fucking greatest. I had, like, a great seat. You guys saw how great my seat was. Had a blast. Anyway, ignoring that. My favourite part was the expensive merch, and then you walk outside, and because it's England, mate, because we, you, you've got the grafters, you've got the people who've got their printers at home that have printed off the same t-shirts that they found online, and I was literally outside in the soaking rain, like, selling t-shirts for £10, and I'm like, what is this life? <laughs> they live, they just go outside at the, like, the arena yeah. and just start selling bootleg merch, and I'm like, not only am I like, why, like, why are you doing this? But then you've also got the people that are buying it, and I'm like, I'm like, what? Like, I don't get it. I'm like, either buy the expensive merch or don't buy the merch. Don't go, oh, do you remember that this is my, or, this is my bootleg t-shirt from the time slightly... I saw Parable? Or buy the slightly more reasonably priced merch from their websites or something if you really need a band mm. t-shirt. But oh, it's funny. I've been, oh, 100%. I've been to like 30 or so concerts and I've only ever seen those guys, those like, you know, bootleg merch salesmen like three times. It's crazy. Honestly. Oh no, I apparently in Birmingham they are they're just everywhere. Every every time there's a there's a there's a show on, they're just like they're out there. They're out there <laughs> grafting. I'm like, hey, fair play. Fair play. I also want to give fair play to everyone in Paramore for saying Birmingham and not Birmingham. So congratulations to that one. You passed the test as far as I'm concerned. That was pretty epic. <laughs> um but no. Good show, but I was very exhausted. Um it was very like it was like a four hour show, very long. But, you know, take that out. Then I have a really busy week at work. And then Nintendo's like, why don't we just drop the Xenoblade DLC in the middle of the week where you can't play it? Uh, and Jedi at the end of the week where you don't have time for it. So it's a great week for me. It's a great week. Uh, but luckily, Hunter, you've played a bit of Jedi, haven't you? I sure have. And Kyle, you have played basically all of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. Yeah, I finished it. And I have played part the of Xenoblade screen. Chronicles 3. I, I've, got the, I've got the title He's screen. He's made it open. to the title screen, folks. I've made it, guys. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you very much. As you can see, the title screen hasn't changed. I don't know if it does change, but, you know, it hasn't changed, which means I definitely haven't beaten it. I'm like Chapter 4. But anyway, we're going to talk all about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. We're going to talk about however much of Jedi Survivor Hunter has played. We'll also meet him on how terrible the port is everywhere. Even Not even a port. Everywhere is awful. It's great. We'll talk about it. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where everything takes us. I finished coffee talk. I can talk about that if I need to. We've got plenty to talk about. Um, but anyway, if you're new here, this is the HBO podcast. We're here every Monday. We talk about everything we love in the world of gaming. Uh, we are trying to get to 200 subscribers before Breath, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, whatever it's called. That Zelda game that definitely hasn't leaked already. One day already. you'll learn what the name of this game is called. I don't called. think I ever will. I think I think the only way I ever will is if it's like I love it even more than Breath of the Wild and it becomes my new like second or first favorite game of all time. And then I'll remember its name. It has to deserve It'd be me funny if you liked it more and still couldn't get the name right, though. <laughs> That's hundred percent gonna happen, Hunter. You see, this is the problem yeah. now. I'm like, it's, it's <laughs> I'm just, I'm just screwed either way. I'm just screwed either way. Regardless, we're trying to get to 200 subscribers before the game comes out in two weeks, and we're really, really close. So if you can go to youtubecom forward slash only, hit us with subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, what will we do? Who knows? We'll celebrate. I don't know what to suggest, to be honest. I'm just, I'd be like, we'll give a copy away. I just spent £100 on an SSD because my PC's dying. I don't want to talk about that. Anyway, um, 
but please go and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, we're like 12 away. So if you could, we'd really yeah. greatly appreciate it. Uh, as it helps us get review copies, it helps us uh, in the algorithms. It really does support us. We're not just saying it's chat shit. You can leave a like as well, but like I say, subscribe, please. Thank you. Um, I just say we get started straight. Oh, reviews are up. Coffee Talk Review is up on YouTube.com and at HotGamesOnly.com. Uh, and so is the Horizon Burning Shores review. I finally wrote a review, ladies and gentlemen. It's taken me like three years. I did it. It's up on YouTube.com. Um, thank that you. Review really thank you. Off. It did. I think Tuesdays are a good day for reviews. Like Resident mm. Evil got good traction when it's that went up. It's a good day. And I can tell you weekends are not good. So please go and support the Coffee Talk review because I don't know what happened <laughs> with that one. Please <laughs> go and support that one. Give it a couple of watches. Give it a like. Thank you very much. Um, at the right now the review is sitting at less views than the podcast episode that yeah i don't know what happened talk. i don't know what happened we're never releasing a review on a weekend ever again please go and watch it we would appreciate it um regardless some support hunter did a good job he did do a good yeah. job and i don't know why youtube decided to go no bad timmy get in the corner <laughs> <laughs> everyone loves aloy <laughs> apparently um anyway yeah everyone everyone loves aloy everyone especially loves the internet aloy. especially metacritic anyway i digress especially one third it. of this podcast hosts yes definitely um xenoblade chronicles 3 future redeemed the end is here the end is nigh everybody xenoblade is dead it is buried we have started digging the grave kyle has fully <laughs> dug his grave and has uh, has buried it it's all done I it's true i buried it. all my copies they're all it's gone all yeah they're going to turn into the world tree or whatever it was from two. <laughs> Hell yeah. But no, uh, and I'm so we're going to become yeah. the mad scientist. We're going to talk about it. Um, we're going to try and mitigate spoilers. Like we're going to try and do as minimal spoilers as we possibly can. Cause I don't think it's fair to spoil this, especially as it comes out, especially because if you're a Xenoblade fan, it's finish. already hard enough because Twitter, good Lord. Like what was the, they gave everybody a good day. And I was like, I know it's only like 15 to 20 hours, guys, but really, like, I was like, already seeing people going, okay, it's been a day, right? Let's get everything out. I'm like, no, close Twitter. I'm going to <laughs> hiding. Um, but no. So you finished it, Kyle. How long did it take you to finish it? Uh, main game took me 12 hours, about. Mm -hmm. And then after I beat the game, I went back and 100%ed it. And cool. that added on like another 12, 13 hours. Mm hmm uh i'm midway through chapter four uh i guess the only <laughs> so that kyle knows where i am so that there's no spoilers but without spoiling it to you i'll just say one word snow that's what i'll say ah. i'm in chapter four ah. um <laughs> so snow i'm like I've, I've played about 14 hours i'm about 14 hours in and i'm at snow in chapter four um i've been doing all my side quests as i go uh i've been exploring the world as i see fit i'm not going for 100 percent. i do not have <laughs> the time i have to move i literally have to go to this write a review and go straight to jedi survivor so i don't really have time to go and um prat around getting all of the containers and stuff like that we've lost hunter and Damn. we're back wow hunter <laughs> so unprofessional i know i know you haven't played shows up half an hour late yet. There's no need to leave. Oh, yes, yeah, so half an time. hour late to the podcast that started <laughs> recording an hour and a half late. <laughs> Unacceptable. Unacceptable behavior. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying now. Uh, but no, I'm doing all the side quests. I'm not doing all of the collectible, the all of that tripe, like, you know, the collectopedia, the enemyopedia, whatever they call it. The I'm not doing all stupid. of it. The bestiary. <laughs> yeah. I should say when I hundred when I say I hundred percent of this game, it's all except the enemy PDO. I'm not filling out a fucking Pokedex. Well, I I, I want to say I'm not doing it. I feel like the item PDO, whatever that's called, the collector PDO, also annoying as fuck. Like like I'm just yes. collecting. I'm just going. Hey, I, I've got most of this stuff from going through the area once. That's nice. But then it's like there's like one or two things where it's like I'm sorry you didn't get enough of those kind of uh, wood pieces, and I'm like, well, go fuck yourself. Then I'm not doing that. Dude, it's really weird that they require you to have like x amount of the item for yeah, it to really count dumb. compared to how that was in xenoblade one and xenoblade x where you just needed the thing needed it's... one of the thing it's very bizarre but we will not be talking about too many spoilers i don't want to delve into it too much i will say though if you're completely trying to go into it blind don't watch i would say that we'll probably yeah. talk about characters and 
I'll say there'll at least be spoilers for party the <clears throat> six party members and probably going into or around chapter two or three, just because that's when the plot actually starts. Um, I was saying to Kyle, uh, the little tiny bit that we did talk about this, this game has bizarre pacing um, where the first hour or two uh, is really slow and I'm like, what is this? And then it just, <laughs> as soon as Shulk and Rex show up, up, it's like, hooray, off to the races. And I'm like, that's <laughs> so weird. It's very bizarre. Um, I'll also say this about the DLC. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those people that started xenoblade with the third game it's completely feasible to do yeah i think you can play i think Double. that you can play the third game without needing yeah, to can. without needing the whole context honestly yeah just skip to three yeah, <laughs> yeah but don't don't skip to <laughs> dlc don't, don't skip to dlc do not for the love play of the God. dlc um i feel you'll... really bad for for harry mcintyre the voice of noah in three because he's playing the dlc now on his stream Mm -hmm. and one of the first things he said when he started the when he started the dlc was just like i feel like i'm so out of my depth right now and i should 100 percent say you will be out of your depth you i even will be the one thing i will say about this story is i'm having a great time i think it's great so far but my god there's one scene in particular in chapter three near the end of chapter three start of chapter four i don't remember where it is on the scale um but there's one point where there is literal exposition and I can't tell if the game wants me to be on the same page right now to be slightly confused, to be like, oh yeah, okay. There's like this bit where they start doing a load of reveals and I'm like, I don't know which ones they're expecting me to be on. Like, am I, which ones am I supposed to be like, oh yeah, I know what's happening. What I'm like, eh, what? Like, it's, it's a very, it's a very, fan servicey dlc and what i mean by that is not just like hey look guys the gang is here look here's rex and all you fucking haters now like him and all you likers now love him it's great yeah. and then here's shulk who i can't Sus. tell if he's late 30s or early 50s from his design in a way um may or may not be part vampire who yeah knows? like there's so many questions like genuinely and there's so many questions and so many things that i'm like why are they still alive? <laughs> like, it's like there's certain things where it's like, I understand what they're doing and there's a lot of stuff that I like, but there's also stuff that I'm like, it's hard to review these things without knowing the full story because I'm sure there will be answers to some of these questions. I'm sure there'll be no answers to some of the others, but at least when you're done, you're like, okay, now I can start asking <laughs> why because, you know, it's like there's a bit uh, there's a bit between two characters where in chapter two, um, Shulk says to Rex, "Oh, maybe they'll come. Maybe they'll talk to you because they talk." And then I'm like, "Keep going through the game." And I've been playing for five hours, and I'm like, "Is that ever coming? Or is that like a side quest? Or is that a heart to heart that I've just missed?" And then it does pick up again five hours later, and it that does happen, and I'm like, "Okay, that's weird." <laughs> like, this game is very weird at times, um, but I do like it. It's very good so far um it's just it's it's very bizarre <laughs> in many <laughs> ways um let's talk about the cast i guess so you've got you've I got this cast it's so much. like i'm just gonna like i'm gonna flat out say it like i've noah grew on me i really liked noah by the time i got to the end but i really didn't like him um at the start Matthew is like the anti Noah to me, where I loved him from the start and it keeps on growing. Like, Matthew, Matthew is, is genuinely hilarious. probably one of my favorite Xeno protagonists, period. I absolutely love him from his oh, yeah. voice to his performance. Um, it's just there's something about his like voice acting, which is just fantastic. It is just like. People always go, haha, Xenoblade, it's all British, in it? And I'm like, no, it has, it's been very much kind of tame British and a couple of Welsh people <laughs> up until this point. Now you've got like kind of whatever, I don't even know how to describe Matthew's real accent really, but it's very kind of rough and kind of like, he's like me in a way where kind of like, whereas, whereas A is like Kyle, who's 
bashing me for my grammar every fucking day and then <laughs> Matthew was me and I'm just like in it what yeah it's just like I love him he is just like I'm feeling full of beans I'm feeling full of beans which a lot of Americans are surprised that that's an actual thing that people say um I don't know why. I've never yeah. heard you say it, but it doesn't sound out of the ordinary to expect. I'm feeling full <laughs> of beads. It's just really funny. It's just a really funny line, to be honest. And when you start out in this game, you only have you and A, and then you get you, A, and then Nickel. So it's like you get a very small party, so you just hear a lot of Michael, uh, M Matthew, Michael, Matthew. fucking hell, <laughs> Matthews, um, voice lines at the start so mm -hmm. you just hear a lot of i'm feeling full of beads because a is not a very talkative character so you just hear a lot of matt <laughs> and it's just like that same <laughs> line over and over again and it was great um but no i really i really like him and i really love how instantly they kind of that's the one thing i did like about this dlc was they don't keep leave you hanging on who matt really is and what mm -hmm. his deal is and his sister Niall, um, they don't really go, okay, what's the difference? They're like, we know he looks like Noah. He is your, he is your fucking <laughs> Venn diagram. Like, he is your family, your family history tree. chart. Like, um, you know, um, so you kind of get all that established. It's basically, you're looking for his sister. His sister's gone missing. The city's collapsed. If you remember from the base game, spoilers for base game, and fucking <laughs> wreaks havoc on the city. He basically has his GTA mad session, right? And off he goes. And then it turns out that um, he killed uh, Matt and Niall's grandfather in this attack. And then, obviously, he's trying to find his sister because the explosion happened. He's gone missing. So he's now partnered with this mysterious person who is called A, who has the core crystal, the red core crystal. And you're like, oh, what's happening there? A, red core crystal? Definitely don't know what's happening there. Let's keep playing this video game and find out what's happening. Um, yeah, I love the relationship between Matthew and A. Yeah, I genuinely... <laughs> they, they play off each other so well. <laughs> I'm genuinely usually... I'm not usually a fan of A's kind of character trope when it comes to anime. I really don't kind of like the kind of very much like not necessarily introverted but very much like i know what i'm doing i'm very like in my own head like i am the professional here i am going to be like you've got you've got the professional you've got the stoic. child who's matt yeah stoic kind of the kind of stoic kind of know-it-all in a way where she's like in the very first couple of scenes she's like i knew this was going to happen and this is what this and matthew stop running off and i'm like stop being my mom fuck off <laughs> but once like the first hour goes out of its way i start really warming up to her because she kind of she 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 just bounces off of Matt really well, where it is kind of she is the kind of straight man to Matt's whatever goober he is, where he's just running around doing a load of his like, singular brain cell. Like I love the fact that his blade is just fists because he literally yeah. is the kind of person whose solution to everything is just punch things. Like the first <laughs> boss fight in this game, Hunter, is him just going to going in the middle of a battle between Kevers and Agnes and be like, yeah, I'm just going to stir shit till the consoles come out and then beat them the fuck up. And that's basically <laughs> what he does. He just nice. beats up two consoles instantly because he's just like, because that's just what he does. Um, and I just really do like the way uh, they bounce off of each other. Yeah. They're pretty cool. They have, they have some really good banter. There's one moment where <laughs> Matthew's, where Matthew was just like, all right, I'm going to comb the area for clues. And then A just goes, well, save for your hair. I don't think anything here needs combing. Yeah. There are it's just some... like small little banter like that. that it, it helps sell the relationship between the two of them. I really mm. enjoy it. But no, yeah, they're very good. Obviously, the next two characters. So you have those two. I like to consider those. They're the brand new characters. Quote, unquote, brand new characters. They're the brand new pair. You have mm -hmm. then the two characters that you meet who are kind of like your surrogate kind of Xeno 3 protagonist where they are in the cycle and they've been let out of it in Nicole and Glimmer, who very weirdly look like... Uh, one of them has Pyra's core crystal and the other one looks like Shulk but smaller. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what this is. I uh, Who knows? Who would have guessed from the trailers? They, um, they literally just copy-pasted Shulk and then shrunk him. Here's God. the thing, right? Nicole. And 
I don't think it's I don't think it's a spoiler to say that obviously Nicole and Glimmer are the son slash daughter of Shulk and Rex, respectively. Yeah. I don't think that's a spoiler to say because I think everyone worked that out. I think anyone I th- with eyes could figure that out, yeah. I think what's really interesting is I look at Glimmer and I see both Rex and Pirate in that character. I'm like, I can see that you're the kid. When I look at Shulk, I'm like, I do not see Fiora anywhere. I know you two basically look like Unless siblings. Fiora so barely yeah. had a personality. Yeah. <laughs> but you know it's kind of interesting looking at nickel and going i see just a small shulk and i know that fiora basically is just Smoke. a female shulk but i'm like you could have at least given us something here to make her rese- like make him resemble fiora because that's the a thing is like arm <laughs> while you see the yeah well the, the prosthetic arm is recent hunter that is a that is a new development um for shulk um but i do they warmed up on oh, me. I liked. <laughs> I liked Nickel at first. I was like, "Oh, I kind of hate you. You're everything that I dislike about Shulk." But then I kind of warmed up to him in a way, in a way where it's like, because he is like a baby Shulk, you're kind of like, "Oh, you know." I kind of he Shulk before he goes all simp. I'm like, I kind of like you. Come here, little <laughs> Shulk. We're gonna protect you from the world. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, I, no, I did end up liking Nickel quite a bit so far in it. He's kind of grown on me. And G- Glimmer is a marvel. And I love this kind of... I saw this hypothesis on Twitter where it was like, all of Rex's children seem to have the fucking wrong personality of a different parent. And I kind of, like... <laughs> Glimmer is 100% Pyro Rex's kid, but she's so much like Mithra. It's unreal mm. how, like, sassy she is. Like, she has got, like, Mithra's personality through and through, which is funny, because then someone was like, you know, when you think about it, Mio is kind of more like Pyra than she is, like, uh, Nia, and I'm like, oh my god, like, what would... <laughs> is this, like, <laughs> this is why I just pass it on? So it's like, Mithra's kids just like Nia? I don't want to see that combination. I hope we don't, because that sounds tragic. Um... You see those people on Twitter that were trying to say that Dirk from the base game, the other claw guy, was Mithra's Definitely kid? Not. Definitely. That not. was hyper copium. Like, uh, it's, it's, like ra- it's like Xenoblade fans. Random people can just exist without having to have connections to other people. Yeah. It it was <laughs> random people just exist in this world. Nope. Not not everybody has to be somebody important. It was weird though. I am, to be honest, it is it is weird to me where it's like, because the thing they do here, Hunter, is every time they're like, it's definitely their kid, right? But they're like, they won't flat out say it. They'll just do everything on their planet to basically just be like, like until like chapter four-ish, they just like, yeah, it's weird, eh? Like, this is a weird situation that we're in, way, And it's just like, this is so weird. Just, just admit it, guys. Just admit <laughs> it. Why is it taking so long to admit it? Um, but it, like I don't, it is weird to me that it's like okay we've seen two of the kids I'm like that's weird <laughs> why did they never show like at least to jump to chapter four it's like it's weird just just a little just a little copium just just saying just saying where's the third kid I also think it's weird can we talk about it because obviously Shulk and Rex are here they're both fantastic I like both of these iterations of these characters to be honest I love both of them <laughs> um they're great. They, it's like Shulk has ironed out all the things that I hated about him in Xenoblade 1. All those kind of things have been ironed out to the point where he feels pretty comfortable, to be honest, um, in who he is. And he's just kind of... He he is just kind of... He, he's still him, but he's kind of taken on this kind of personality-ish of Dunban in the way of that he's like, yeah. I've got so many people relying on me, I've kind of had to grow into this adult role, where he still very much feels like Shulk, but he's got this responsibility now, and mm-hmm. I like it quite a bit. And Rex is just Rex. Like, Rex is just, <laughs> like... I, d- I love him, but at the same time, I'm like, it's such a weird jump, where I'm like, People are like, oh, it's him growing up. I'm like, he was only he was like fourteen or fifteen in the base game. No one, no one goes from that. Like, if you're when you're a fifteen year old, you kind of know how they're gonna end up by that point. And I'm like, this guy, fuck, I don't know what Rex did, but damn, needs to share his secrets because rise and grind. He fucking he, he rose and he grinded. <laughs> Push ups, Jeez. sit ups, and plenty of juice. <laughs> but he genuinely is like my like. I love oh, yeah. him. I genuinely adore him. Like, the first kind of... 
I love the dynamics between the between Shulk and uh, Nickel and Glimmer and Rex as well, just because they're so different, uh, but they fit both of them. Where it's just mm-hmm. like, I just love the way that Shulk is very much just kind. He's that kind of parent where he's just like. He's kind of like promoting Nichols inquisitiveness where he's just like, oh yeah, that is interesting. Let's talk about that and do it. Mm-hmm. And Rex is just like, you stupid fucker. What have you done? <laughs> like, you fucking donkey. <laughs> literally. Uh, but I do, I, I just, oh. I love the, it is, it's fan service. When they both show up, it is very fan service Like literally oh, yeah. the first three things Rex says are all quotes from Xenoblade 2. And it's like, <laughs> I love it. It's great. The only thing Even... he hasn't done is reference the salvages code, which I'm kind of disappointed about, to be honest. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, I'll give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt for the next two chapters, but I'm like, where the fuck's this up? Like, if this, is, <laughs> if this was real Rex, you would have been like, rule number six, mate. Rule number six. Where is it? Where is it? But no, even um, down to their gameplay, like, they're, mm-hmm. they're just super well done. Like, Rex now fights with two swords, like Morag did in He's Xenoblade broken. 2. He's, broken, He's so busted. <laughs> as soon as I swapped to him, I was like, I'm not moving off of this character ever. Hunt, literally, oh, yeah. there's an upgrade you can get later where he's got... He's got the spinning. Well, I can't remember what's the spinning. Double move spinning called? edge. Double, double spinning edge. He's got double spinning edge again, but I don't know if it's an upgrade nice. or if this is just how it works. You can get it so that the double spinning edge builds up the charge on the double spinning edge, so you can just fucking yeah. spin yourself right round, baby. Spin forever. to win. I love characters <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's got crit recharge built into it, so every time you get a critical hit, it the art recharges itself. It just combos into itself. Uh, yes, Xenoblade Three, and it kind of becomes DLC, a problem. Continuing the uh, um, base games thing of having the double sword class be <laughs> busted. <laughs> It, it is genuinely kind of a problem where you're doing too much DPS to the point where my def- my defense can't keep the yeah. aggro, so I keep yeah. dying because I'm just spinning to win and all the aggro comes back on me and I just die instantly because <laughs> he kind of does have, like, he kind of does have that kind of glass cannon build like Morag does where if the attack gets on him, he's fucking Salu. He just, like, yeah. bleeds instantly. The difference um, is he doesn't have the evasion that Morag had to to not get hit yeah so he just um, dies in two hits but it's so funny dude dude it is and really then, funny and then you've got shulk who's taken on dunban's role as the as the the evasion tank mm-hmm. right down like shulk is just dunban copy pasted right down to all the arts he does just looking like stuff dunban oh, did he's got blossom dance it's this game is fan service in the best possible way even from like it, it 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 very much is and for the first couple of hours i was especially kind of i don't know if i was butter or whatever but a lot of the early game kind of reference stuff other than like sh- the wreck showing up is very xenoblade one heavy there's a lot of xenoblade <laughs> yeah. one references and fan service uh, and stuff like that and i was like Oh, like you, you, they just—they just answer questions that people have been bitching about on Twitter for decades. Where they're like, "Okay, here you go. Here's your law, right? There you go. That's what like little <laughs> nods." But they don't ever explicitly say anything, and that's why I kind of I like it. They give you answers, but they also just don't <laughs> as at the same time. It also baffles me where the fuck everybody is. Like I keep thinking this, where I'm like, <laughs> not to the end yet, so I don't know if there's a reason for it. But it's like the fact that it's like. This isn't the birth of the first city, Hunter. This is, like, obviously, it's the rebuilding. So why is Shulk and Rex, like, 500 years or so into Ionios? Why aren't they at the start? Why is this, like, oh, like why? Where's everybody else? Where are their friends? Like, they all act, they're, like, their friends are gone. Other than, obviously, the fuckers that held hostage and yeeted away, like, in Xenoblade 3. Yeah. But it has got me answered. Okay, why is Shulk and rex alive where the fuck is where the fuck is pyromithra where are like the people that you'd expect to still be around especially when you're like yeah. okay if shulk can survive why is fiora gone where's like i i understand because she should have been in the first place <laughs> i understand some of the debt like I, I understand some of the, the older people being gone in a way where it's like i can understand like dunban being gone i can understand zeke and morag not being here morag so far anyway. there's no justice not, not a single wrong. reference to morag so far just want to throw that one out there four <laughs> hours in um there are very obvious references to uh zeke 
and Pandoria yeah. and to Sharla and Ryan. There are very obvious references to those characters <laughs> in particular. Wow. Charlo um, gets a reference before Morag. That's messed up. <laughs> well, I can't yeah. about it. I mean, <laughs> I think I Rex is the reference yeah. to Morag. Kind of. But even like Zeke gets basically all but name dropped. Like they basically very much, there's a character that's, they're basically just like, oh, well, I was told this. And they were like, well, you know where you got that information from. And it's a very unreliable source. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I instantly know that that's Zeke that they're talking about. Because like, of course it is. <laughs> But one of my favorite little nods at from, from this game was in an early cutscene. It's a, in one of Matthew's little flashbacks to his past, and he, where he's with um, his grandfather and Niall, and some of the kids from the city come over to Niall and they're like, "Can you play the piano for us?" And she goes, "Sure. What do you want to hear?" And, and they, they just, just start uh, listing off the Xenoblade Chronicle soundtrack, Xenoblade and I'm like, "That's so weird." Like that I'm was like, like that's, that. It's such a cool. It's That's it's a funny out. like, like, like yeah, they planes. Yeah, they genuinely are. They're like, can yeah. you play? Yeah, it's like yeah. They're like, can you play Gower Planes? The tomorrow, um, is it not the tomorrow? Walking with you or the remember. tomorrow with you? One of those. And yeah. then the hunters, no shit. The third song they ask to hear is Zeke's battle theme from Xenoblade Two. Yeah, oh, amazing. <laughs> on the piano. <laughs> on the on the piano, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't like, ready to hear that. <laughs> but it was really funny. Well, like, you know, it's like, even though there are, there are plenty of references to both of them, and obviously I'm not done with oh, the yeah. game yet, so I'm sure there's still plenty more to come. But it's oh, yeah. like... You're just going to encounter turtles fully grown, oh, massive, I wish, dude, right I at the wish. end. I wish. <laughs> Honestly, there's a bit where they're like, hey guys, let's go back to our base, and there was a small part of me that was like, what if it was just fucking a massive turtle on the ocean, dude? Like, what if, <laughs> what if it was turtles? I was like, what a riot that would have been. Um, oh, that would have been funny. The, 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 the base is pretty cool regardless. It was, but, it was um, nice to see Colony 9 again. It is, Come, yeah. Go back to where it all started. Because um, that's the thing is, right? Because it's like, I think in the base game, they did a great job of making new areas with nods to different places where you're like, okay, that's definitely a reference to more ordain or that's a bit, that's mm -hmm. obviously a reference to, um, Gower Plains or, you know, you've obviously got the massive sword from the, uh, yeah. Bionis and you've got like, there's a load of stuff where you're like, that's really cool. I really, but then it's like, where are, where is colony nine or where are some of these other areas? I don't know how many are. I said, I, I said snow. So I feel like I can say, <laughs> <laughs> I can feel like as it can say Tantel. Like you're like, where are all these places? And then you actually get some of them more. And cause it's the DLC, they feel like they can be more fan servicey in the way where it's like, okay, here is colony nine as colony nine. Mm -hmm. And here is, you know. T here is Tantel with the root. The way I won't say what they blend Tantel with because I feel like that is a spoiler. But when I heard, when I realized what they kind of mixed from Xenoblade One and Two together like that, I was like, "That's fucking genius." I'm like, "It was that on the board? <laughs> like, did they think about that from the stocks?" I'm like, "Those two things are such a good thing to like put together, like thematically." I'm like, "That's fucking incredible." I loved that. Um. But it is, there's just like, there's just little bits of it where I'm like, you know, that's, I really appreciate it. And then I'm also like, in the same way that, in the same way as Torna, right? Where you're like, oh God, I'm like, okay, why weren't these here? Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> why weren't these here in the base game? <laughs> Getting nervous. I think what's fun is, you know, you kind of know what happened. Like, I kind of, you have an inkling of what happens because obviously with the city, but also you don't know what happens fully because you don't have the whole story. And mm -hmm. you also don't know what the hell monolith are pulling and what could potentially you know it doesn't feel like a locked in thing oh, it's yeah. just the story of a city <laughs> of the city the half yeah. of it. so i'm kind of excited but honestly it's just like i i can't i respect xenoblade 3 a lot for not going nostalgia bait full on like you know hey guys look here's all the classics dlc i'm more inclined for them to do that but the fact that they're doing it in such a way where it doesn't feel like they're just bringing out the classics for the sake of it like it doesn't yeah. feel like they're bringing rex out just go hey guys do you want to like him now <laughs> like they're not just doing that for the sake of it they're actually telling something that's really interesting and you know having these kind of dynamics where i just like i kind of i kind of like it it's it's mm -hmm. 
do I wish there's like there's parts of me that are like I wish we saw some other characters that aren't just Shulker Rex and I re- I do like seeing the like the father daughter dynamic between Rex and Glimmer kind of makes me sad that we never really get to see him with Mio or you know whoever this mysterious third child is um or just any relationship in general like it's like it's weird to see rex and not see pyramidra but the swords are here and i'm like i'm just like this is so weird to me where it's like i can kind of see shulk without everybody but rex i'm just like <laughs> no one mentions it like no one's gonna where's dromark uh, like where is Dro- where is fucking where dromark, is dromark dude? where is dromark like i'm genuinely we concerned for him. still alive from base yeah. game what's fucks dromark like I'm genuinely like, I, I, I'm dead. Baffled. That's why there's like a statue of him, or he's he's very statuesque in a bunch of iconography in that one area. My current, I don't know what Maybe. to say, Hunter. My current hypothesis is only some of them got moved to I like only some of them are here in Ionios. Is my fucking current bet is like I don't I don't know if everybody made it originally or if everybody scattered <laughs> across. Like, was it only certain people where they were like, okay, only so many of us can get. It's like the matrix right only so like we're making the matrix here and we only have a certain bandwidth to let us in so who's going in it's like <laughs> okay two queens and shulk and Rex for some fucking reason well there you go <laughs> off we go bye bye do you not need the aegises nah fuck them off we'll just take we'll just take rex he's a lad just take he? the swords yeah. it's good enough it's good enough i'll be able to put them together like a popsicle stick Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of was like, that was so dope when his his special it's ability so onto cool. it's just him smashing them together and then becoming the Numa Sword and just fucking slamming it down on enemies and just exploding <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, that's kind of so cool, cool to be honest. It's very cool. I um, love Rex. Dude, honestly, even his right. new voice actor did a really good job too. Like <laughs> Al Weaver's gone, unfortunately, but the new guys were just as good. And uh, yeah, and unlike in the original, in the Japanese version, Rex has his original actor, and Glimmer is voiced by the same person that voiced Pyra. Yeah. Whereas they're both different in this one. And whereas I'm kind of sad Al Weaver didn't reprise the role as Rex, but I still like the new guy. I 100% see why they did a different voice for Glimmer, and I actually kind of appreciate that they did. I love Sky D- uh, Sky Bennett as Pyra. And yeah. Mithra. She's great, but also. Glimmer is a different character, and I do yeah. much, I prefer it that way than to just have Pyra Mif- slash Mifra Jr. just rolling, rolling around. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the new voice actors do a good job, and then obviously Adam Howden is still fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen much of Harry yet, but the little bit that I have seen is pretty great, and plays a very interesting role in this, which I like. Uh, he doesn't really, you'd expect with him being the kind of driving force with him killing uh, Matt's granddad and, you know, being basically the cause of the disappearance of his sister. You're like, okay, what the fuck? You think that he's kind of the main antagonist of this kind of story and he's kind of a driving force, but he plays like this interesting role. So does the whole of Mobius, to be honest. They're very interesting in this. Mm. Whereas uh, you originally, <laughs> when you think of the history books, you very much probably think of it as a, the kind of the resistance versus Mobius. It It's this weird kind of proxy where everybody's involved, but in very different ways. And I like it quite a bit. Yeah. Mobius kind of takes a back seat in, in the story of this game. In That's favor of a, a bigger antagonist. But it's interesting because the little bits that they have done with N and Zed especially, I'm like, this actually makes them more interesting in base game. When I'm mm-hmm. like, seeing these little bits of how Zed's kind of modus is like working <clears throat> and you're like, okay, these little interesting bits, like I won't spoil anything, but when you're like, again it's not like zed's pulling the strings like he is in the base game he's very much in a different role and so is n yeah it's like it's interesting seeing how these work in a way where even the game is very much with the consoles like you see like three consoles so far i've seen three consoles over than n in this game and you beat the shit out of them and they just fucking go away (laughs) yeah they are very much in the way we were like, oh man, they just kind of feel like recycled. In the same way, this game has made them feel like, yeah, they are just pawns where it's just like Zed just gets a new console every time the other one's fucking deceased because they don't kind of... Mm-hmm. Ma- it's very interesting where I'm like... They don't matter um, to him. They don't matter to him. And also Zed's like... In- like 
in the base game you just kind of think okay zed's just trying to maintain the status quo here and this game's basically like zed hasn't always maintained that it's not always been a thing where the base game kind of alludes you to be like this has just been this perfect cycle with a couple of mishaps every now and again and zed's always been in control here and then this story is basically like that's not necessarily true and it's never been a clear cut kind of situation where it's always been everybody against zed and zed against everybody it's not always been that way mm -hmm. and i kind of it makes it more interesting it's a bit like torna syndrome where you're like you know some of these characters i feel like could have been fleshed out a little bit more and then torna comes in and rolls up its sleeves and goes hello <laughs> may i introduce you to the characters again so that you can get a better understanding of the base game and appreciate it more and i feel like this is doing the same thing not like i needed more appreciation for, for n anyway i did oh, yeah but uh, I mean, more of him's not a bad thing. Mm. Like I say, I won't say very... no to cool sword villain. No, and I'm very interested in seeing where this kind of all goes. I'm very interested. Mm. I have no clue where it's going, to be honest. I have no clue, and I don't think from the it's fun. brief reactions that I have seen, I don't think I could guess where it's going. If I was completely honest with you, but it looks it's it's been it's been fun it's more xenoblade and in i like to bring this into contrast with horizon which we talked about last week reviewers up youtube.com forward slash hot games um where i said that it was very insignificant where it's like if you're a fan of horizon you can play this and you'll have a good time but you don't need to do your homework you don't need to worry about this it's not it's insignificant it doesn't really matter in terms of the grand scale of the horizon universe this is more of xenoblade 3 which is my favorite game of last year i'm enjoying it a lot it's just a it's a blast to play but the story is significant where it's like there's stuff here that you wouldn't want to miss if you are a fan mm. of the franchise because there's actually some fucking <laughs> there's some good stuff here there's like there's some food it's good yeah um and the other thing to note is that takahashi has said that this future redeemed is the end of the klaus zanza saga that's been going on since xenoblade one mm -hmm. so this is the last point of this trilogy yeah and it's 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 weird because it does like i say i'm t i'm two thirds of the way through three quarters of the way through and it doesn't feel like a wrap-up to a series at all at the fucking moment so mm -hmm. i'm like it's, i'm very interested to see if they pull anything off or if i'm just like well that's a weird note to leave it on we'll <laughs> see um well hurry up and get to finishing because i think i'm gonna explode if i don't talk to somebody about spoilers for this game i'll finish it tomorrow probably good boy we'll see i'll finish it tomorrow and hey maybe we'll record a spoiler cast who knows we could do one of those who knows well i haven't done one of those in a while we haven't maybe we will we probably should to be honest if we are gonna do it we probably, we should, should. probably should we should probably even if that's only it. like even if that's only like half an hour 40 minutes we should still do one hell yeah we'll do it we'll do it but now i'm having oh, a blast no. um you seem to enjoy it yeah i i love this game i think it's a a very wonderful way to cap off cap off this story arc and i'm excited to see where where things go next because shit gets crazy in chapter five i'm sure it does i'm sure it does um but yeah review will be up some point uh i'll get to it don't you worry about it i've got to <laughs> i've got to finish the game first uh but yeah it, it's just it's just fun and it's also easy as fuck by the way it's like the easiest you know oh, yeah. experience i've ever played in my life like there's only one fight that was challenging and it was because they took the character that i had upgraded to shit away from me and then i had to fight <laughs> it and I, and I had to fight as the character that i played as the least and i was like well this is fun yeah this is fine <laughs> um and it was one of those also, ones where it was like, I'm supposed to lose this, right? And the game's like, nope. And I'm like, well, <laughs> nah, shit. Nah. You gotta win, <laughs> son. Get good. You gonna get learn good. today. Maybe. Did I learn? Or did uh, I get lucky? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, it's pretty great. You should play it if you haven't already, but who am I kidding? You're probably already playing it. You're probably here to hear. You're probably done people. with it, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah, probably it's not it's my fault that i'm not done with it because i had work so i had literally like two hours to play it this week and then i've just been binging it today before the podcast i literally out of my 14 hours i played eight of them today um <laughs> so it's been it's been fun it's been a good time 
Anyway, Hunter, you've waited long enough. You've listened to us <laughs> drone on and on and on. Would you like to talk how, about how Star, Star Wars? Wars? Oh, yeah, Star Wars. Um, yeah, it's pretty solid. All things considered. <laughs> oh, man, all uh-huh. things considered. Should we talk about the drama first? Should we talk yeah, about go for it. the state of the I mean, I don't here? care about performance things, so might as well talk about it now. Because uh, well, that's like... not where my thoughts really lie. Yeah, let's, let's talk about this. So, my... my... Review for this game is going to come later. I'm reviewing this game as well. Why the, I'm fucking screwed. But the review is coming later because I kind of want to give them a chance here. I want to give them a good couple. Like I'll give them a good couple of days to maybe fix the unattainable platinum trophy. That'd be a start, you know. Just make it fully <laughs> actually finish. Like maybe make it finishable. That'd be great. Um, but I think the main problem with this game is not only is it 150 fucking gigabytes, which is a joke. Like, when I, I got the game a day early. I couldn't play it, but I got the game a day early. I had to rent I... a vacation house to have the space to download this game. Genuinely. And the worst part <laughs> is, is you have to keep your PlayStation on the whole time because it doesn't yeah. count like a regular download. It counts as the PlayStation disc copying. So even though you've copied all, like, 50 gigs off the disc... You have to keep it on because I put it in rest mode. I was like, okay, the rest of it's just downloading. Rent mess mode. Come home six hours later. Nope. Start back from square one. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I started installing it and took a nap, and my PlayStation eventually did go into rest mode. And when I woke up, the game was not finished installing. <laughs> so, genuine is yeah. a fucking disgrace. It's a disgrace. When you're bigger <laughs> than Call of Duty, you know you've done bad because Call of Duty this is the biggest worst. file size I've seen by so many gigabytes in mm. a game not even close not even close um i give it so many of games that you know i like more in it like transistor or something or celeste or anything like that <laughs> you know it's absolutely uh. ridiculous it's like i always love when i go to switch and it's like I know there's, I know it's a different console. I know there's a lot of stuff there, but it's like when I look at stuff and it's like, oh yeah, you've got this whole game that's like sixty hours long and it's like six gigs, and I'm like, that's epic, that's cool. Thank you for taking up no space on my <laughs> micro SD card. And you go to PlayStation, it's like, hold my fucking beer, dude. Here's like a game that's like 156 gigabytes. I'm like, Lord, what have we come to? Um, but now that's not the only problem. It runs like ass everywhere you go. Like, and if you're on PC, fucking good luck. <laughs> Salute to you. <laughs> you're not playing it. Uh, the PC port's really bad. If you're pl- uh, planning on playing it on PC, here's our review. Don't. Thank you for coming to the TED Talk. How is it on PlayStation 5, Hunter? Uh, it's fine so far. Like, I've noticed a couple of... Like, uh, there's a fight near the opening segment there where this Inquisitor pops out of their crashed you know aircraft and there's some fire going on I'm like huh the fire doesn't look too great but and i think the lead into the cutscene is probably a bit stuttery but you know aside from that there's nothing in gameplay that's ruined my day and maybe I think it would the worst yuck. thing it probably yucks the yum of people who are real snobbish about that but you know i mean my I don't review, care. my my impression would be if you could deal with Elden ring's frame rate you can deal with this because Elden Ring was not a good experience on PlayStation on consoles anyway. It would never hit 60 properly. So if you could deal with Elden Ring, you can deal with this. My favorite thing is before you start, there's like the normal performance and quality mode toggle. And the image that they used for this. Though yeah, like, that was super weird. I'm like, I've never seen I've never seen that. It looks like you didn't finish rendering your performance. It looks like they made yeah, there. here's my here's my hypothesis, Hunter. They know how shit performance mode runs. I think they made it look worse in that image so more people click quality. I genuinely mm. think that's what they're doing. Because I was like, I've never and looking at the game comparison, it doesn't look that bad in performance mode at all. It's like it looks like Kyle, I want you to imagine this. On the right-hand side is the video game, the way it looks in quality mode. You're like, oh, that's very pretty. And then on the left-hand side, it looks like a pre-rendered image from a 1990s visual novel point-and-click Lucasfilm game where they've like taken <laughs> something that they made in a 3D space and then they rendered out a 2D image that's like four, 240p because See, they have to stick what, it. What it looked like to me was like a um, when I played Dragon Age Inquisition 
all the time when you were like traveling to places you'd just mm-hmm. kind of like be set where you're spawning and then the world would have to load in in like pieces where it'd be like the geometry and then the textures and all that it looked like they took a still of the game while it was still not done rendering everything for you <laughs> it's and like i say yeah. i honestly think they're trying to make people play it in quality mode because of how terrible the performance is and it's like i just i'm just like fucking why like i don't get the game has got really positive reviews so i'm sure the game is fun i'm sure the game is better than jedi fallen order in terms of actual game play and game but i think there's there's one thing i remember about jedi fallen order from launch was how much of a buggy broken mess it was on release and how it wasn't good and how my first impression of that game was i was running through one of my i shouldn't say first impression one of my most vivid memories of that game is running through um this is this is going to make me look like such a star wars fan whatever the fuck the wookie planet's called i'm a big star wars fan, guys <laughs> thank you I just played Fallen Order not too long ago. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to help you either. Nah, but I was running Star through Wars there. Fan. Dude, I'm I'm not a Star Wars fan. I liked Fallen Order. I'm not a Star Wars fan. <laughs> but I was running through there, and I ran too far. I was running too quickly through the world, so the floor hadn't loaded its collision yet, and I just fell through the fucking world. <laughs> and because of the way that game's checkpoint system is, I went 10 minutes back into the fucking level to the last time I touched a save point. So I just was like, fucking shit game. <laughs> like, I was like, you dickhead. I hate you. But yeah, I was some like, of this would be less, th- probably less annoying if it auto checkpointed every once in a while instead of the meditation point thing. Like uh, last night, and thankfully this happened right as I was finishing up anyway, but I got my, uh, the only time the game has crashed so far was right at the end of my session last night. I'm like, I had just walked away from the meditation point and then it was like, and I'm like, well, at least, at least you have a sense of timing there. <laughs> I didn't lose anything. Well, yeah, like, that's my thing is, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but literally, I, I said to you guys, I booted it up just to make sure, because I was like, I was not unsure if the game had properly installed because of how stupid it was to install it. So I just booted it up and it played like, you know, the, you see in the start under the little spot, you know, the logo bollocks. Yeah. And then it just instantly crashed. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Huh? Like I don't know what happened. As intended. Yeah, it's like it got to like I got through the first couple of menus where it's like you know the accessibility options and all that shit, and then as soon as it got to the sky of you know start a new journey with the fucking flying cars everywhere and stuff like that, the flying ships, I was like, crash, and I was like, well, I'm definitely not playing the first hour of this. I'm just gonna wait. (laughs) I'm just gonna wait (laughs) because I've got (laughs) no play to play. I was like, how? It's it's baffling it's in it you think because of how infamous that game was at launch you think that when they made a sequel the top of their priority list was guys we can't release it in a state again like we can't and they just did again and they, they like, just did they yeah just did. i could see i could easily see this being a situation like days gone where you're just getting a patch every day for like three <laughs> weeks <laughs> Maybe. or however that was with days gone i there were a lot of patches for that game <laughs> like yeah, it was yeah. still patching by the time i finished it <laughs> doesn't surprise me uh, um but bugs aside all of that jazz aside how are you finding it oh well it feels a whole lot better than fallen order as far as control and all of that like uh Fallen Order was, you know, putting the bugs and whatnot aside, there was still some kind of element of jank to how Cal felt in a lot of respects mm-hmm. in that game, where running on the walls never felt quite right, doing the little flippy jump later in the game never felt quite right, even some of the moves you were doing in combat didn't feel quite right. That's all been ironed out now, and I feel like, at least for my game running as it should be all the times it was it it feels pretty good to play now um one nice thing is that you get to keep all of the abilities you had at the end of the game oh wow you don't have to start from zero that's that's nice i like it over he didn't trip over a fucking twig and lose all his abilities dude that's crazy i love that i do did forget how to customize a lightsaber though he did forget that his lightsaber was purple before starting the game though that is like 
it's just a setting. Just go. What color do you want your lightsaber at the start before you start? Because well, as soon as Hunter told me that, I was like, already, you're starting off on my bad books here. Because it's like, you're telling me I would never have picked a blue lightsaber. Never. Fuck off. Get in the bin. Just yeah. little things. It's just little things. I'm like, it's not doesn't, hard. You put, you put six you things. The Mantis also is not the color I left it at the end of Fallen Order. And I saw that and was rather upset. <laughs> I was like, that is not my ship. That would have been a cool little thing. I'm just saying, Greaseball. I know this is nitpicky as fuck. This would have been a really cool thing, where it's similar to Mass Effect, where you may you could have just been like, hey guys, load your save. Do you have your PS4 save on your PS5? Let's just take a little deep dive here. Color purple. There you go. <laughs> Mantis color red. Cool. Move on. You yeah, know? Just like... yeah, exactly. Or even it's not like there start. was a surplus of colors to pick from in the or other game a, either. Yeah. Or do a it'd be like it'd thing. be a difference if maybe it let you, you know, pull out the color gradients and just choose what yeah. you wanted. But do, do, <laughs> they do didn't the do that. You had thing. you had like three blues, two greens, and then yellow and orange. Yeah, and the purple. Don't forget the purple. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it could have been very easy. Have you played? Did you play Jedi Fallen Order? Yes. What color was your lightsaber? And then you just <laughs> you just go through the options and you just go purple and you go epic. Like how hard is that? What color was the mantis? Well, what color? Yeah, like it's not. I don't. I don't the text get boxes it. Boxes are really hard to make. Yeah. I just, it, too it, much it, effort. it was funny that the lightsaber upset me less than the ship, but I think that's because you know. I don't get to have a red lightsaber ever, so it doesn't matter what color it is. It's not the one I want it to be. I think the thing that annoys me, <laughs> it, I don't know, it's, it's nitpicky as fuck, right? It's nitpicky as fuck. But I think it's because they went through the whole ordeal of being like, blue and green lightsaber only for 75% of the fucking video game. And then you get to and pick your own at the you end. You get to have this moment where you make your own lightsaber and choose the color of your kyber crystal. And then the start of this game was like, nah, fuck you, you went with blue. And I'm like, no, I didn't <laughs> go with blue. What the fuck? <laughs> Leave me alone. I did not go with blue. Yeah. But, you know... So, you, you get all your abilities, which is cool. I like that. Big thumbs up. I hate when games do the classic goodbye abilities. It's dumb. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a really good gameplay feature. Um, yeah, it, lightsaber color aside, that actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, it yeah. is nice. Um, yeah, like, even then, like, after 15 minutes, it lets you even do your double-bladed stance and whatnot, too, so it doesn't take too long to do that. By the time you're done with the little introductory hour or so you've already got the three stances that they're starting you with for most of the game available Epic. to you with the single blade the double and then the dual wielding which was Hoopla. interesting because nice. they gave you all those lightsabers in the first game and it's like really awesome but then it's always made me go okay when they do a sequel they've got like no room for new lightsabers here and they have done the new one they are they, oh, yeah apparently got there the are kylo new ren. ones you've I got the kylo got ren yet. But played it, one, like you know, yeah, and then I don't, um, I don't know what the fifth one is gonna be, but I did hear about the cr cross guard sword. Mm -hmm. I'll be excited to get to that because that those did look really cool. Um, but it is um, just really like Cal Kestis is just a cat, like, and the funny thing is, these are canon now, like Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor are canon in Star Wars, so it's just like to me. It makes every other fucking Jedi look shit because he's like, oh, what's that? This because he masters Skywalker. everything, yeah. Because yeah, like, oh yeah, by the way, did you know that there's this uh, Jedi out there called Cal Kestis who has a lightsaber that pulls in half to make another lightsaber that he can then put on and have a Darth Maul saber or just start throwing a second saber and have two in his hand. And then now he can have one. <laughs> now it also turns into the Kylo Ren saber before Kylo Ren had it. So he's the fucking OG now. Fuck you, Kylo Ren. It's <laughs> well, his it's idea. taken from like yeah. way far back in the backstory of the series anyway. So mm -hmm. Kylo but, you know, Ren didn't invent it. Well, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, Kylo Ren anyway. Shit, character. <laughs> character. Useless character. Useless uh. character anyway. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like he's got so much shit and i'm just like cal Kestis is broken like they can never actually bring him <laughs> properly into star wars because he's just fucking broken like what are you gonna do yeah. against cal Kestis? a whole lot of nothing it helps yeah. that he's i do like him more than most star wars protagonists anyway yeah <laughs> i like i liked his story in the first game quite a bit once i got to experience all of it i'm like oh you've got a little bit of 
you know, Luke Skywalker's personality with enough of Anakin's Clone Wars personality and not his movie personality. <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah, and it, it does help that like Cam- Cameron Monaghan uh, is a really good uh, actor. Yeah, he's so. he's really good at what he does. So his performance is still really solid here. Um, Definitely. Um, yeah. Now, one thing about this introduction p- portion of the game and the where the story just kind of picks up from, it's like, I don't remember how many years after Fallen Order it is, but... Three? It, it takes pl- Yeah, it takes place a little while after that. And the, the, the thing... I don't know. They start you off, and your Cal has, like, a new crew because everyone from the, the other game went to do their own thing. Classic. Well, you've got to bring the gang back together, dude. You've got to do that classic second story thing. I didn't want to... Okay, so the whole problem here is that I didn't <laughs> care about anybody in this opening hour of the game because I'm like, you're not Grease, you're not Marin, you're not Seer. And I don't care about it. you're probably going to die or disappear at some point so I can replace yeah, you exactly. back with the originals. So. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I don't care about any of these people. Well, what's your deal? It's like, it's like the, it's, it'd be like if Varl showed up, is like Varl showing up at the beginning of Horizon if, if there were five of him. <laughs> oh, good. Just what we need more of all. <laughs> um, Just sitting here like, I don't care about any of you. At least the droid's the same. <laughs> so yeah and i feel like that's i'm not super fond of that being the entry point for this particular story because i was like got to the end of fallen order and i re- i rather liked the dynamic of the group i was excited to see where that went <laughs> in the next game, game. And and now i have yeah. to now i have it to spend the away i have Bye. to spend the first half of this game Getting to the point where I can see this again. That's super silly. <laughs> he can't be a survivor if he's got his posse hunter. Come on, dude. They're all survivors. That's part of the theme. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that aside, the opening segment was passable, I guess. It got better once you got to the... Uh, um, yeah, it, it's an opening segment to a AAA game. Those are on on a scale on the scale of Forbidden West to ten. Where are you ranking the introduction of this game? I don't know, like six. I guess it's better than Forbidden West. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I'm just making. But sure. yeah. Um, aside from that, it's nice that the double bladed sa- like the dual wielding saber thing. It's nice that that's like a fully fleshed out move set this time instead of just being a little special attack. Oh yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, I've been rocking with that for since I had the option. Like basically, since given the option, I've been using dual wield and then double saber, and the singular lightsaber has been stashed away, <laughs> probably I forever. Really it's been heads now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably going why, to be gone. Why use one sword when you have a second one right there? Exactly. And exactly. you can stick them together. <laughs> It's yeah. funny because yeah, it's funny because they it's like when you're switching them out, it will show you like the little stat thing. Because yeah, that's one mechanic I guess I should mention is the stances. It's not, you don't freely cycle between all of them at once. You pick two and then you just kind of live with that decision until you don't want to anymore. Okay. <laughs> Which fair enough since they have like five choices eventually because. What I was asking for at the end of Fallen Order was like, okay, it will be cool in the next game if we can just swap freely between single, double, and then dual wield. And they've apparently gone above that, so fair enough. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, the uh, worlds, or the, I've only really done the one world following the opening segment here mm-hmm. so far. Um they're bigger, like, they're more open-ended. I wouldn't say they're obnoxiously large to the point where it's like, oh, gotta spend, like, 20 minutes sprinting from one direction, in a single direction to get anywhere, and all of that. I have been, I don't know, it's just my video game kleptomania, checking around corners and stuff, looking for things, but you could probably be more straightforward about it without much hassle if you it's really wanted to. Onto. It's not Elden Ring. There's not something around every corner. No, no, but <laughs> like, you know, if you, you can usually tell where there's going to be a little box for your cosmetics or whatever. Oh, the yeah. cosmetics better this time? <clears throat> uh, Yeah. First of all, the starting 
thing looks substantially better the poncho than the fucking stupid gone. poncho. Is the poncho deceased, yeah. please. <laughs> I actually just found the poncho. No, you can oh, equip it if you so God. desire. And it got an 86. <laughs> I can excuse the game not running on PC and the glitches, but bringing the poncho back, fucking hell. Yeah. Um. I, uh, oh. God. I am never going to be wearing it because I took it off the first chance I got in Fallen Order. He was wearing that scrapper jacket the whole time. Dude, if they have um, if they have stats in game, like if they have like stats on their side where they can see what cosmetics are used the most, they're gonna see like a zero percent on that poncho. No one's wearing that shit. Like genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. It but yeah, there's a whole bunch of like you can change down to <laughs> jackets, shirts, pants, etc selection of colors that for some reason when you unlock these you you unlock them in like pieces where you'll get the pants and then you'll have to find the materials for the like you you thankfully unlock all of the colors once you unlock the rest of the colors but you don't have to like unlock blue green and orange or whatever all the all at once Mm -hmm. or one at a time rather but you still have to do that separately from getting the item which is weird uh uh, yeah, well. yeah, it's a weird choice that I don't quite understand, but you know, what can you do? I and it's not like the starting jacket that he's got looks fine, so it's not like if I didn't if I didn't find anything else for the rest of the game, I would be you know pleased, I guess. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be upset. On top of that, you can customize like his hair and his facial hair and all that. And so far, I've gotten like three little beard things, and none of them look good except for like the stubble that they made with, you know, with the with his character in mind already that it defaults to. The short beard and the full beard both look pretty bad. <laughs> Thankfully, the other haircuts look fine, as far as the couple I've unlocked. Well, there's the well. No, no crew cut ever looks good, so that's not the game's fault. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the other ones look acceptable, as far as like you know, rendered and all that. His hair is still very well rendered in general, which was an amusing detail about the first game. That I'm like, if the hair looks better than everything else in this game by a mile, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember what all of the new lightsaber colors are, but I know specifically that white was not available in the first game, and it is now. Well, that's, that's the one I selected because I don't. I don't want any of the other ones. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Great. That's what I want anyway. <laughs> no red for you. Never. Yeah. Maybe but... in the third game. Maybe they'll learn their lesson. Maybe, you know, or it's going to be New Game Plus, which won't help me anyway. What, you Lame. don't want to play this game again? I'm, I'm not going to have time <laughs> to play the game again. I'm hoping I get to finish it. That's my dream right now, is like, yeah. <laughs> I'll have I'll have like a week and a half, but it's like, you know, next week I'm really busy again, even worse than this last, last week. So it's like, I don't know how I'm going to finish this game in time. Um, but I mean... It really sucks that the games kind of come out in such a terrible state. Like, it kind of sucks because I feel like this game has, like, no reason to come out. Like, I don't think anyone was like, this game needs to come out right now, this second. Like, we really need it. And I'm like, it just feels bizarre to push out in this state. Especially, like, I get it. You don't want to be in May because no one wants to be in May. And you don't want to be in June. But there's nothing in July. There's nothing. Like, you've got Armored Core in August. Yeah. It's yeah, like, and like Armored Core versus Star Wars. It's not a competition. Yeah. Like, you could have had any point this summer that isn't like, obviously June, very busy. Skip June. Yeah. But July or August, free, like, free ball there, dude. Like, genuinely. You came out in December the first time round and did all right. I don't understand <laughs> why... They rushed it out because it's like, it. I'm not gonna lie, like it has kind of put like not necessarily. I want to play it because I really enjoy, I did enjoy the first game, but it has kind of put me, not necessarily off, but I'm just a bit like, oh, that's it's kind of lame that it's a bit shit right now. Like it's playable, but it's not fantastic. Like it's not like I remember when I replayed 
Jedi Fallen Order on the PS5 version. I was like, oh, this game's so much better running at a good frame rate and not being buggy as shit. This is great. I had a much better time the second time round. And I'm like, do I want to do that thing again where I play through it the first time and begrudgingly go, oh, it fucking could be better. The stupid glitches. Why am I falling through the floor every five minutes? And then play it again three years later? I don't know. I'm hoping yeah. that they fix a lot I mean, of so far I haven't fallen through the floor or anything. I did have one instance <laughs> where an enemy just disappeared. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not going to fight you. But Bye. aside from the hard crash at the end of the session last night, that's about all I've got as far mm. as glitches and whatnot. So, oh, fair yeah. enough. Like I say, it's it, it's bizarre, man. It's bizarre. I wonder if it Disney is a bummer that it come it. out like this, though, since uh, it builds on the bones of the other game pretty well, as mm. far as where they're actually taking the gameplay and all that. They make the true, yeah, like I said, the traversal and stuff feels better too. Like everything about how you're moving feels better than the wall running feels nice. Um, okay, they have this goofy wall jump thing where the opening segments kind of bamboozled me for a second because you can like jump on the wall and jump back and just keep you can jump you can wall jump on a singular wall and i wasn't expecting oh, really? that to be yeah like super metroid i guess and i wasn't expecting that to be what they wanted me to do because you were it's like it's like you're walking through a hallway or whatever and mm -hmm. you hit the thing where it's like the wall that they want you to jump on and then distanced slightly too far apart to be wall jumped in the way that you would expect are these uh, is a pair of walls so i kept trying to do that anyway because i wasn't expecting to be able to just keep bouncing yeah. up and up on the <laughs> singular wall and i'm like that's weird but okay cal is overpowered yeah he's, he's just um, <laughs> do it. not put him in the star wars movies or do it'd be funny yeah. it would be funny to be fair but now um it's it's weird right it's such a like i say it, it's a great game apparently behind all the bugs and all that stuff hopefully they fix it quickly is my hope um and you know it's still playable it's not like if you're playing on console it seems to still perfectly be enjoyable you can still you'll get a couple of yeah, glitches I've you might been, have a crash I've, or two i've been liking it so far there's nothing that's really agitated me well there you go then. definitely if you're into it check it out uh, hopefully third time's the charm respawn right because <laughs> this definitely is i've not even played it i've not seen anything that suggests it it's definitely the middle chapter and the you know everyone loves doing trilogies these days it's definitely probably it's written into the, the dna of the series it's from so yeah, yeah. exactly yeah um so hopefully next That'll time round, they guys. bring back star killer from the force unleashed oh, God. oh baby <laughs> that'd be crazy <laughs> That'd be scary. That's um, a one. That's a Star Wars game I've played. I've also <laughs> played, played the Force it. Unleashed. I've played yeah, it as well. I have it on yeah. the Wii. It's oh, back nice. there on that shelf. Oh, you played that version? I played the PS3 version. Sorry, it was the only Which one a different I could game. play. Which is a different For some game. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, the Wii and the PS3 version and the Xbox version are different. Why? <laughs> Don't know. But the PS3 and Xbox 360 version is one version of the game, and then the Wii version is a completely different version of that video game. And then when they ported it to Switch, they ported the Wii version, and everyone was like, why? Why did you not port what? the actual version? It's bizarre. Bizarre. Anyway. What? It's all good. But hey, you can play Star Wars. Play it on console. For the love of God. If you're going to play it, play it on console. You won't be able to play it on PC, apparently. Um, yeah. Who knows? That's what you get for being a PC gamer. Nerds. Yeah, a bunch of nerds. $2,000 on a thing that can't even run Star Wars Jedi Survivor? <laughs> I mean, in, in these PC players' defense, it is only available on the newer consoles now, which only just became uh, easier to find earlier this year. So You can now buy a PlayStation 5. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Wild. You don't. You, you, do you want one though? That's the real. You don't question. need one. You don't need one unless you want to play Final Fantasy 16. Well, yeah, the problem it? here what we were just discussing is that if they wanted to play Star Wars, they can't play it on the PC now. Or if True. you wanted to play Star Wars, <laughs> maybe that's an option. Then you need now. a PS5. <laughs> then you need a PS5. I may Which or may way? not have been paying attention. That's the spirit, Carlos. Spirit. <laughs> we can always count on you. 
Um, anyway, I guess that's it. I guess that's our show. We're done. Go and play Xenoblade. Go and play Star Wars. Unless you're on PC. Yeah. Then go and play Coffee Talk too. Oh, yeah, yeah, go, go play, play that. It. It's a good one. I did. I played it. I but played first, it watch Hunter's review. We watch Hunter's review. Please. But I, I liked it quite a bit. It was interesting. They also did some more interesting stuff this time around with the time travel kind of mechanic where you can kind of go back and piss about. And they did a couple yeah, of more yeah. interesting things with that this time around. Yeah, I liked that. They, they, they gave you more reasons to go and actually do that rather than just kind of accepting what you got the first time. I actually had like to. A, yeah, I did. I had to do five full playthroughs for the platinum of the game. Five full crazy. playthroughs. You Which, just it, went it, right it, for the platinum trophy. Of course I did. Of course I did. Uh, fucking have you met Ethan? Hello. Have you met me? Oh, He's not when playing Star five... Wars because he can't get the platinum. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. It's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you, Xenoblade. Very cool. <laughs> You're the real reason. Um, but no, yeah, it takes five playthroughs. But the, to be fair, some of them are partial where it's just like the final one. I just had to try and get. Uh, Riona and Lucas's normal ending, which is very hard to get. That normal ending is the hard one to get. What's as opposed to what is there scales of good, yeah, normal and bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bad is Riona stop stop showing up, and then oh. you just get whatever ending with uh, Lucas, and then the normal one is you get Lucas and Riona to partner up, but you get them to partner up on the last day possible instead of a couple of days before. So there's a different ending based on where you get it. And I think So what, the only... they didn't have time to ask Rachel to be a guest? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And it's on the last day, so it okay. doesn't tie into jo- Geordie, Geordie's stuff either. It's very oh. weird. I think all you have to do is give Riona the wrong drink on the day that they're supposed to all team up. And if you do that, it moves over. I don't know. It took me fucking five playthroughs to figure it out. There's no guide on the internet. It's great fun. It was fun. I liked the game, though. Don't do what I did. but Just just play it as many times as satisfies you. Yeah, do that. (laughs) Don't be an idiot like me. Which maybe maybe you want to play it five times. Who knows? I I, I finished two and had a slight urge to play the first game again. You're crazy. But... I don't know. I'll leave that for when the physical versions come later this year. I'll play them both. Hell yeah. That's the spirit. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, as always, all links are on screen right now if you're watching the video version, or you can go into the description on podcasts. You can go follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with everything that we're doing uh, outside of the podcast. Uh, next week, who knows what we're doing. We should have Kane on, but that's we a should. TM. I need to remind him about that. We should be having Kane on next week. Uh, TBD. TBD. And then, obviously, we are going to be moving swiftly ahead towards Tears of the Kingdom. I remembered its name. Way that is go. coming out the following week. Uh, sure and then, is. and then we, and then the podcast dies because who knows? What, there's a big gap. There's like a whole month of yeah. We haven't done a three nothing. by three in a while. Uh, we could just take a vacation for a while, <laughs> maybe, so we can maybe, all, so we can play Zelda. Maybe there'll be a place to <laughs> then come case. back. Maybe there'll be a key three. <laughs> We got and then stuff. come back for Street, Street Fighter. Fighter. Or whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah. We can't miss the PlayStation Showcase or Key 3 Hunter. We can't miss them. Oh, the Street well, we Fighter sure will be like coming it. out before Jeff Keighley's thing because it comes That's... out on like the second day of June. Oh, yeah. okay. True. Yeah. True. <laughs> PlayStation Showcase is supposed it. to be May, though, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. At least that'll be something, hopefully. I can't wait to still not know what PlayStation's gonna do in the next couple of years after we're done. <laughs> Horizon 3, baby, that's all we need. That's all we need, apparently. That's all Gorilla. I, I right. liked how the internet was like, oh boy, Horizon 3 confirmed what? by the little what? soft muttering that they had and their little personnel switch up. And I'm like, well, that's as much of a confirmation as the ending of the second well, game. It was a conf- yeah, well, no. <laughs> it was the second game was like we're making Horizon Three, and then that blog post was Sony's funding Horizon Three. Congratulations, guys! You are getting it. I'm like, wow, I'm I'm shocked. In other world, in other news, the sky is blue, and uh, yeah, it's like it'd be like if you, it'd be like no one would, should have been surprised that Horizon was getting a sequel. Like, Everybody in, knows like, uh, that yeah. Sony will greenlight any sequel as long as it's not that Days isn't Gone. Days gone. gone. <laughs> Everyone knows this. Come yeah. on, guys, get with the program. <laughs> Get with a program. Anyone can do what they want unless they're named Sony Bend. Yeah, then you get the short end. Feels bad. Feels bad. Sorry, Ben. 
maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, Everyone's go buy all their siphon filter games. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only people that are actually showing up for PlayStation Premium. I'll give them that. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week, same time, same place, ne- uh, for more. But yeah, until then, have an awesome week, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Here to leave.